Hey, what is going on guys? We are back and I am so excited to get started on today's video. It's been over two months since our last League of Legends redesign, but we told you guys to expect more and here we are. These are such a fun exercise in character design, working backwards from old, dated designs that seem, well for lack of a better word, just half-assed, and turning them into something new, fresh, and exciting. Look, we know that the character design team at Riot can make interesting character designs, and from a more subjective standpoint, there is just such a vast quantity of characters to pick from in this game that you can pretty much find something for everyone to enjoy, no matter what your tastes may be. But I think that a majority of you will agree with me, whether you play League or not, that Malphite is a character with a ton of potential and very little thought put into the final execution. To be fair, he's literally one of the oldest champions in the game, part of the original 40 champion roster, and at the point of League's conception, the lineup was actually so unappealing that it's a wonder to me how anyone could stomach looking at these characters long enough to play a 25 minute game. And now, the difference between Malphite and some of the other original 40 champions is that Malphite has had little changed about his visual design over the past 10 years. Champions like Fiddlesticks, Kale, Gangplank, and Scion have had complete visual and gameplay updates, changing their animations, overall designs, mechanics, and splash art, while other characters like Dr. Mundo, Alistar, Zillion, and Malphite have really only seen minor changes to their overall designs, receiving new splash art and some updated graphics and particle effects. Their gameplay mechanics have changed too, but today we're just going to be focusing on visual design only. Now I should point out that Malphite actually has received a minor rework. Kinda. Riot is working on a mobile version of League of Legends called Wild Rift, and a bunch of the older champions that they're using in this game are actually getting their designs tweaked a bit. It's almost as if they realize how horribly dated these characters look, and that there's just no way they could sell a game to new players in 2020 with something that looks like this. That said, Malphite looks a lot better in this game. His proportions are exaggerated in ways that takes the eye through the design in a much more fluid way, and things like anatomy and movement are considered with a lot more care and attention. Honestly, if Malphite looked like this in the core game, which actually would make him feel more like his splash art, I wouldn't feel like we needed to change him at all. But even still, I feel like we could make him look a little bit more interesting than what we have in Wild Rift. He's still kind of just a generic rock monster. So, what goes into an official champion VGU in League of Legends? Let's take a look at Fiddlesticks, another one of the OG champions that just this year received a complete design and gameplay overhaul. Well, the first thing the design team does is focus in on a character's main themes. For Fiddlestick, this theme was fear. It's not just a visual theme, but an integral part of how the character plays as well. Using that central theme as a basis, the team explored concepts that would best reflect the idea, while still preserving elements of the character's design that players were already familiar with. A well-informed design like this can translate fluidly into the game design process, allowing developers to better conceive new abilities and playstyles to further fit the theme of fear. Each part of the process influences the next. Gameplay mechanics inspire designs, designs lend themselves to new mechanics, but it all centers around a core theme. And if enough time and thought is put into the entire design, the end result is a character that is fun to play, immerses the player in the themes of the design, new, unique, and innovative from a visual standpoint, and still pays respects to the original design that longtime players have been seeing for over a decade. We want to apply a tiny fragment of this process to our design overhaul of Malphite, but of course, it's just me and Claire working on this project. We don't have an entire professional full-time design team at our disposal, or months to a year to plan it all out. We only had a week and some help from our loyal fans in the Discord to hammer out this idea, but that said, we're pretty proud of it. Now, because we don't actually have the Riot design team here for consultation, our best bet at reinterpreting the original designer's intent when they first created Malphite is to read up on his lore to get an idea of the character's history, personality, and abilities. Funny enough, Malphite's official lore has actually completely changed since his conception, so in a way, it's all kind of moot. I mean, if they changed his entire lore once, who's to say they wouldn't do it again if they actually did decide to rework him? But for the sake of consistency, we'll use his current bio as a basis for our redesign, because it's actually pretty interesting. Basically, back before the current time in League's lore, there was this ancient kingdom known as Ixtal. Aesthetically, Ixtal draws inspiration from Mesoamerican cultures like the Maya and the Aztec. Ixtal had some smart cookies among their elite, including a brilliant mage named Nezuk. 
Nizuk had grown concerned about the impending threat of the Void, a destructive, otherworldly force that had obliterated countless other nations, including Ixtal's neighboring nation of Shurima. So Nizuk did what any mage would do. He built a giant, floating stone fortress to fight off the armies of the Void. As you can imagine, a giant sentient stone mega weapon did a pretty good job fighting off the purple guys, until it crashed, and exploded, into a bazillion pieces, and kind of made things worse. But while it didn't quite stop the invasion of the Void, that didn't mean it wasn't going to stop trying. You see, all of the little pieces, well, little is a subjective term, the shards of the monolith still had a bit of magic in them, and some of them still retained their constructor's intent as their driving motivation. And of all the scarred, cobbled fragments of the once mighty fortress, one managed to bring itself back to life. And that shard of the monolith was none other than our pal Malphite. Now he travels the land, confused, determined, and giant as hell, seeking out any remnants of the void and eliminating them inside of his magical stone body. I think if there was one word I could use to sum up the theme I intend to base this redesign around, it would be dutiful. A character that is so focused on the task it was instructed to complete that not even exploding into a million pieces will stop it from completing its goal. If I had to pick a second word, it would probably be oblivious, cause, you know, he's kind of a big stupid rock. But I wanted him to look like a somewhat friendly stupid rock. Personality-wise, that was my goal. Other goals for this redesign included highlighting his most impactful game ability, his ultimate, into his design visually. Emphasizing the fact that he was not just a rock, but also part of a man-made structure, and in general, change up his shape so that he doesn't have these strange hair-like spikes that really don't make any sense to me at all. At the earliest stage of concept development, I just scribbled down any idea that I could think of that would match the theme of dutiful rock. In concept number one, I was thinking a lot about Malphite's current ultimate ability, where he crashes into the earth like a meteor. In my opinion, it's his most fun tool in his kit, and I felt like his design should play more into the idea of a rock that could launch itself at the speed of a comet. In concept two, I was playing up more of the idea of Malphite's tanky side. I also wanted to introduce more structural, architectural elements to convey the fact that he was cobbled together from a man-made construct. This one was also more animalistic than the first. In the third concept, I continued down the line of animal-like designs, leaning into something kind of gorilla-ish. Malphite already has some gorilla-like proportions, and even an emote where he pounds his chest. In this one, I wanted to play that up to a more dramatic degree. Design 4 was my first foray into a more vertical, bipedal look. Look, I'm glad I tried it, but this shit is boring as hell, and we all know it. The next design, number 5, was a more interesting iteration of the bipedal humanoid concept. I also included more architectural structure into this one as well. Overall though, it felt too different from Malphite's original design, and it kind of looked like that robot from the anime with the sad kid. Design 6 was also very humanoid, more like a living stone statue with a determined demeanor. But of course, there's already a sentient statue in League with a very similar personality, Galio, and I didn't want the two to get confused. Number 7 came totally out of left field. I wanted something horizontal but not quite humanoid. The result was this really cute old man looking toad guy with a big old volcano on his back. You know, I really like this boy, maybe I'll save him for a separate design. And number 8 was my, this would never be in League, but it would be awesome nonetheless design. Thinking more about his ultimate ability, I just thought it would be great if he was just a massive, floating stone fist that crashed into waves of foes with one giant punch. It would never be in League, but yeah, I wish it could. Each of these ideas had something about them that I liked, but I couldn't decide from which design I wanted to derive my final concept. I asked you guys in the Discord for your feedback, and the majority of you said that you liked 6 and 3 the most. While I thought that 6 best exemplified my dutiful Rockman theme, it looked too much like Galio, like I said before, and it was just too different from what Malphite's original design was. I want to overhaul the look, but it still needs to preserve some of what he started from. 
I honestly liked 3 a lot, but Claire pointed out that it seemed too much like a sidekick character. It was too cutesy and animalistic to be a playable champion. No offense, Yumi. But I decided to combine a little of 3, a little of 2, and a little of 6 all together and see what I could come up with. Like I had said before, I did want to play up the gorilla look in this design. That's just a personal preference. I love gorillas. But I also liked the stone jet turbine that I had on the back of 6. I thought it would help explain visually how a giant golem the size of a mountain could rocket himself into battle with the force of a meteor. It also gave the impression that the character had some man-made origins, that perhaps this rocket was once used as a weapon, or maybe to keep the monolith afloat. The only issue with making a gorilla-like character with a jetpack is that, well, it's kind of already been done. I was happy with the sketch by the time I had finished it, but when I showed it to the Discord, a bunch of people said that it looked like Winston, and I was like, ah oh, crap, not again. So, just like the last time one of my character designs was compared to Overwatch, I had to start from square one, and think about how I could convey the same energy without it looking like a skin for Winston. Here's what I kept. The large triangular cliff face on the back. I needed that shape to further push the whole living meteor thing. This character was going to look as aerodynamic as a mountain could be. The triangular head. This again was for the sake of consistency with shapes, giving him that aerodynamic feel, but what's more, it felt like a good balance between scary and friendly. Like a grumpy turtle who will protect you if he must, but is also prone to snapping. The stone carvings on the side. I liked the added dynamism these pieces provided, and they just gave it enough of that man-made aesthetic that I needed to push in this rework. Which was good, because the first thing I changed was getting rid of the carved stone collar. This was part of what was making it feel so much like Winston, and it looked like he was wearing a big suit of armor. The other big, most obvious change was the quadrupedal pose. Keeping the anatomical proportions of a gorilla, but not having him walk on his knuckles instantly pulled him out of Winston territory, but still preserved how animalistic I wanted him to feel. Once I had settled with this design, it was time to mess with colors. I tried out a bunch of different schemes, pretty much hitting the whole rainbow of hues. I liked a lot of them, and I seriously considered the sandy white color scheme for a bit. I felt like it made him feel more extali, but also, again, made him feel like a more angry version of Galio. In the end, I stuck with his original color scheme with the addition of some sandy white for his carved adornments. It's actually not a terrible palette, and it stands out real well against the green of the rift, which is probably why they chose it in the first place. It also helped preserve a little bit more of the original Malphite for all of his devoted fans. To be sure that the colors looked good in-game, I took the time and tried my hand at painting a rough in-game model of the character, as he would look from the top-down perspective of League. This was kind of out of my comfort zone as an artist, but it was a good exercise nonetheless, and it helped solidify this design a lot more, validating that this was actually something that you could imagine being seen in the official game. The last part of this process was updating his splash art. Now, you guys already know that I'm not a painter, but fortunately, my awesome girlfriend Claire is, and so I sketched out a rough thumbnail for her, and she worked her magic painting in her own style a brand new piece of Malphite splash art that really pushed his whole Rocket Comet aesthetic.
And with our splash art finished, we had completed our rework of Malphite. I think we did a pretty good job preserving the parts of Malphite that people are already familiar with. His bulkiness, his sharp edges, his big arms, and his jagged green smile. But we also pushed some of the things that his original design was really lacking. More dynamic shapes that actually made sense for a living mountain. Architectural elements that reinforced his history as a man-made construct. And a design centered around his ultimate ability, really helping the player feel like a giant, walking meteor that could launch itself into a crowd of enemies and crush them all into dust. But of course, this was a subjective rework. If you guys feel like you have ideas for your own redesign of Malphite, let us know down in the comments. Or, if you're so inclined, whip up some sketches and share them in our Discord. Here are a few concepts that you guys have already done. By the way guys, when you share work in the Discord, be sure to include your artist tag or some way for me to credit you. I actually can't credit any of these artists because all I have is their Discord handles which change regularly. Either way, great job everyone, this one has to be my favorite, I, I just love how chonky it is. So let us know what you guys think of our rework. What did you like? What did you think we could have done differently? Or maybe you feel like Malphite didn't need anything fixed at all. Leave us your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, this was a long video and if you made it all the way to the end, give yourself a pat on the back. It's been a pleasure as always, I love you all and we'll see you in the next video.